Hello and welcome back to SuperCloud 7 as we continue to unpack the next data platform and the, just how things are changing and ever changing within the data and AI space. And I, I think again, we've had some great people on so far, but again, I'm so excited for this because it, again, it's about all of the data and the stack that goes around it and how you really understand the metadata and how it all comes together. And I, I think that's a big piece of what we're doing here. So really excited to be able to welcome on the CEO of uh, Fivetran, who's George Frazier. Thank you for coming on board. As well as Gaurav Pathak, who's the VP of Product Management, AI and Metadata at Informatica. And of course, not least, not least, is but George. George yeah, well, well, George Gilbert, who is one of the principal analysts with us at theCUBE Research and really one of the stars in this space. So I'm, I'm glad to be able to go down this path. George, let me kick it off with you in, because again, we've both, you've been in this a lot longer than I have in this, in the, what is really the stack, the modern data stack kind of, what are the different layers and how they come together? How, how, how do you see the layers playing out right now? Sure, yeah, so uh, we, we've been at this for 10 years, uh, which seems like a while, but a lot less time than some. I mean, Informatica has been uh, yeah, in, years. in and around this space <laughs> for 30 years. So uh, the, the data stack is, um, if you want to do anything with, with data, uh, if you have some application you want to do, you need a stack of tools to get it done. Uh, the top layer of the stack is the application layer, and this might be something as traditional as a dashboard telling you about your sales team's performance, or it might be something very cutting edge, like a, uh, a, a chat bot powered by retrieval augmented generation that allows you to ask questions about all of the freeform text in your enterprise. Underneath that, you have the query engines. So think Snowflake or Databricks uh, that are actually process doing the, doing the crunching. Uh, if, if, it's the, if it's the chat bot, it's linear algebra. If it's the sales report, it's a SQL query. Um, underneath that, you have the storage layer. So think uh, the data lakes. Uh, and the catalogs that come along with them. That's where all the data, uh, the, that's the central repository uh, that has the copy of all the data in your enterprise. Uh, and then underneath that, you have the data pipeline. That's where Fivetran lives. Uh, we go out and we get all of the data uh, from all the systems of record where it's generated in your business and we copy it all into that storage layer and then keep it up to date as the sources change. Um, so it's, uh, it's, that, that's the basic lay of the land of the data stack. So let's, let's use that as a framing, Gaurav. Informatica has done more than anyone now to collect all the metadata that's been scattered in, across many tools into um, what's really a knowledge graph that defines this data. And we've been saying for a long time, once we, once we liberate the data from any compute engine, the source of truth now is the, the metadata. And if you take that to its extreme, you have something that, that um, really defines not just the tables and columns, but the semantics of the data. Um, so explain what it is, um, elaborate on that, what is in, in, in your metadata catalog, and what is it that developers can build now that they have such a rich set of metadata? Absolutely, and and uh, you know, great job describing the stack, and and, and that's not changed with all the uh, amount of innovation that's happened in the data industry. Players have changed, but that stack, uh, moving the data from raw data to really processed insight, has remained quite uh, similar. With a metadata knowledge graph, we are looking at triples. We are looking at relationships between individual metadata objects. We collect technical, business, operational usage metadata about data assets. We collect information like schema and structures of uh, what the data looks like in Snowflake, Databricks, or in source systems before Fivetran moves it into those systems as well, or any other pipeline uh, for that matter. We look at how is that pipeline created? What are the transformations? How is all of, all of these things related to each other? So having that triple, having that metadata knowledge graph then allows you to now start doing both human-wise and AI-wise intelligent queries to the data ecosystem itself. You can ask questions like, uh, you know, how many uh, iceberg tables do we have? How many of them are used by people in marketing department? And how many of them are compliant with GDPR? Their data is not moving from one uh, jurisdiction to other. 
these kind of questions were really, really hard to get early on. But with metadata knowledge graphs, with catalogs like these, these are now possible. Okay, so what I've heard is that now that we've centralized all the metadata, things like usage and consumption, um, financial management and governance is much easier to manage so that now um, the central, central IT and, and the data security teams can have comfort that the entire data estate is managed. So, so now they don't have to spend all their time sort of fighting fires to make sure that they have control. Now, um, and we've also up-leveled the data so that there's richer semantics. So now we have presumably um, empowered more groups to build data products. What does that mean for not just the demand for connectors, but the, the um, performance profile of the connectors? What, what do connectors need to do now to get at more data um, and with perhaps varying latency? and reliability? Well, there's a lot of new workloads happening right now. That's one of the big phenomena that we're seeing uh, is customers are doing more new workloads with their data. And um, you know, from a Fivetran perspective, that means uh, new data types. It means there are things that previously maybe didn't belong in the central data estate uh, now belong there, mostly free form text. Uh, Fivetran has had connectors to systems Thank like Zendesk and Slack for many years that have free form text, but there's a whole new emphasis on those systems. We just, for example, made a new Google Drive connector. Our previous Google Drive connector would go looking for CSV files that it could turn into tables. Uh, now, that's not the only thing that's interesting. Now we want to go find PDFs and docs and um, that freeform text, they, there's actually things with AI that we can actually do things with freeform text. So that, that's one form of evolution that we're seeing uh, is that the demand for more diverse sources of data is increasing. Uh, and then the other point of evolution is latency. Uh, some of these more um, operational type of workflows that people want to do uh, with AI agents and things like that, they, um, they require fresher data. So we're seeing you know, the first Fivetran pipeline uh, 10 years ago ran once a day. Uh, and now uh, the, the milestone we're trying to get to is where we can re reliably do one minute latency for all data sources. But I have news, uh, as soon as we reach that milestone, the next milestone will probably be you know, 30 seconds, 15 seconds, it just continues. There's always some marginal next workload that, that needs that lower level of latency. So it's a never ending journey for us. So, so let me ask, um, Databricks made a big splash with, with Lakeflow saying, we're going to make um, the whole pipeline experience easier. Um, how much of that is on the slide and how much do you think is in code and, and where would you position that against the more mature sort of stack that's out there now? Well, one of the characteristics of being in the data integration business uh, is that our destination partners like Databricks, who we uh, work with all the time and, and we love them, they, they also like to do connectors as a hobby. Uh, and the reason this happens is because connectors is a funny business. Uh, it's, it has kind of a shallow ramp. Uh, you can build a connector to Postgres or SQL Server or Salesforce that works pretty well, that works for most, that will work most of the time very quickly. Um, but to build connectors that work all of the time is extremely difficult. Uh, and there are hundreds of data sources uh, in every enterprise. And, and so we think uh, that that will continue to play out the way it has for many years is that most companies will be looking for a solution that uh, can support all of their data sources and work all of the time. And that is a very hard problem and one we've been working on for 10 years. Yeah, I, I, I think one of the things that is super interesting about this whole space, and I think again, is that there are there's a lot of co-opetition within mm -hmm. it. And I, I think we, when we originally came up with this idea and you know, George, myself, and Dave, and we were talking about composable, you know, tech, next data platform, composable next data platform. We talked about that, and really, it's about all the different pieces that come together because they're really good at certain things and you know, bringing them together. Um, I, I think, again, when we did this survey and we went out to and talked to all these co Databricks and Snowflake customers, one of the things, and I, I got to help write it so I got to see the data early on at when it was coming back in. One of the things that was, uh, I would say, surprising, not surprising about the data was the fact that 
so many were using so many different on-premise or hybrid data types. So you had this whole idea of cloud. Now, I mean, Informatica, you're definitely moving towards your, and congratulations, your Q2 just came out today. So congratulations on fantastic Q2 with your 137% you know, jump in cloud revenue, uh, cloud ARR, which is unbelievable. I, but it, I think the reason I say that is it, it shows just this entire, the entire ecosystem is exploding because you have to bring things together. I mean, 51% of people said they're going to continue to use Microsoft SQL for at least the next 12 plus months out into the future. Only 21% of the people said they're not using any hybrid or on-premise, mm -hmm. which to me, I mean, you look at that, that's 20 out of the 100, and, you know, about 21 out of 105. What do you see as the challenges that people need to think about when they're looking at bringing all of this metadata together? Because you're working with the pipelines and you have some, like we were talking about earlier, and there's all this different stuff that has to come together. And you can both answer on that, because I think you see it from two different, slightly different perspectives. So, uh, and that, that's actually exactly the things that we see in large enterprises. 80% of their data is in on-premise systems, uh, uh, right? A lot of it is now in the cloud with Snowflake, Databricks, but the on-premise systems are not going away. Connectors in that case become very, very important. A connector is a connector is a connector, but at the same point of time, these are evolving very, very fast as well. I'll give you an example like the PDF connector uh, that George talked about. Uh, PDF connector now has to uh, figure out uh, that it's not all freeform text. It needs to figure out there are tables in there. And those tables probably need to be sent to relational databases rather than into a vector database because a vector database can't do much with a table that is coming in. A connector needs to be metadata aware uh, because generative AI systems uh, don't have RBAC. Uh, vector databases don't have RBAC. These metadata tags then allow uh, an LLM to figure out whether a user A should be able to get the answer to the query uh, that they should or not. Connectors are going to be very important. The question that we need to ask, are we going towards a world where every single data piece is centralized and in one place, or it's going to be across every, uh, you know, across different places in an organization more federated? I think we have taken a stance that it will be like that. You can't bring all data together, uh, it's, it's not practical. Whereas bringing metadata together, one place will be the right strategy. Let me follow up on that, because we were talking about this earlier, which is right now, neither Databricks nor Snowflake, or for that matter, most anyone else can really capture the lineage graph all the way from origin to final data product. Um, because there's some workloads that are either not in a particular data platform or they're, they're just not price, uh, they're not um, price competitive. So you were saying now that you can, um, now that Fivetran can write um, iceberg tables mm -hmm. or, or, or delta tables perhaps both, both directly. Yeah. So you can do ingest outside of a data platform. Um, now we have orchestrators that can do transformation like Daxter or DBT outside a data platform. Um, Informatica could collect that lineage graph. You can be the catalog of catalogs. Help us understand maybe, George, you first, then Gaurav, what this, when you have a catalog of catalogs and when you have um, connectors and, and transformations that are outside sort of the, the purview of any one platform, how we might still build an enterprise um, metadata uh, map, um, but that's sort of not owned now as the new choke point belonging to any one data platform. Yeah, so what we're talking about here is the rise of decoupled storage formats. Yes. Uh, so if you are running uh, iceberg tables with you know Polaris catalog or delta tables with Unity catalog, you have fundamentally a vendor neutral storage layer that many different compute engines can connect to and read and write. And uh, the one of the consequences of this, which is a negative consequence, is that the lineage problem becomes even harder. To, by the way, the lineage problem is already very hard. Uh, and it becomes even a little bit harder to keep track of where did this thing actually come from? This table that I'm looking at in this system, where did it actually come from? The positive consequence of this is that 
it gives much greater freedom uh, for the customer to mix and match compute engines based on cost considerations, based on user experience, whatever, whatever it may be. A an interesting example of this is Fivetran, uh, when we developed our support for uh, data lakes as a target, uh, which we announced earlier this year and now is, is one of our fastest growing destinations, um, we, we built direct integration into Iceberg. So we're actually performing the ingest, the whole ingest workload in the background. We did not change our pricing model because we control the entire pipeline from the source. We're able to get so many efficiencies that we would just roll the cost of ingest uh, into, into that. And that's an example of fundamentally using a different compute engine, uh, Fivetran behind the scenes, uh, in order to, and we actually are using DuckDB under the hood to do the number crunching that's part of that ingest workload. You can't tell as a user, but that is how it's happening. Um, that's an example of mixing and matching different compute engines for different purposes and, and gaining efficiencies. And it's also an example of what you referred to as coopetition a little bit, I suppose, in the other direction. And you had told me previously, you think ingest is like 20% of Snowflake workloads, transformation is another 30%. So here, someone could be building out that part, uh, running those workloads, and then um, you could be depositing your lineage output either in a table in Snowflake or somewhere where Informatica could consume it and start aggregating it. Yeah, this, this question of what is the breakdown of workloads inside these monolithic data platforms really like is becoming a really important question. As the storage engines open up, now there's going to be the possibility that a lot of these workloads are going to become free to move around. Yeah. And, uh, and so we've, we've speculated about this. We've, we've looked at the information we have and tried to understand the breakdown. A significant part of the workload is ingest and then um, curation of the data that takes place inside the data platform. Interestingly, AWS published a paper in VLDB, I think mm -hmm. today, uh, where they profiled the Redshift fleet and they found the majority of Redshift workloads are ingest of all things. Uh, and, so. and, and I wouldn't be surprised that's, that getting data from all these different systems that enterprise has so that you can now do more insights, AI on top of it, is the most important compute task. When enterprises come to Informatica for their data management uh, projects, they, are, they know that it's not going to stop at a pipeline. They know that it's not going to stop at a dashboard. A data pipeline will require data lineage, it will require data quality, it will require more sources that will come in. Connectors across different patterns, uh, change data capture, ba bulk, batch, stream, uh, getting all of this data in, in reliable ways into whatever targets, iceberg, uh, we now support writing to iceberg, delta, all of these different uh, targets as well. But our bet is that heterogeneity of these systems is going to continue. And that's where a central metadata catalog, I like that you described it as a choke point, uh, but I also think uh, that is the place where most of the innovation happens. Yeah. This is the place, uh, Google was the metadata inventory for the World Wide Web. It allowed people to search for where all the information was and then was able to quickly direct uh, people there. But the, let me just, let me ask a question related to that. Are, are you making Informatica, my understanding was, it's for Informatica's tools to consume Informatica's metadata. Would the next step be to open that up so that other people build tools that consume your metadata? Always, uh, right, and, and not just our metadata. Metadata that we have captured from different systems, from Snowflake stored procedures, from DBT stored procedures, from uh, Power BI, mainframe uh, tools, from Fivetran. Being able to get all of that metadata into uh, AI tools, into other programmatic tools so that they can work with them, that was always the number one goal. So we have open APIs from those metadata knowledge graphs uh, that users can consume from as okay. well. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I look at it and go, we, and we just had a very, very lively conversation about uh, agents and data products and agents being data products and how applications are going to transform. How do, you, how do you see from data ingest all the way to the AI, you know, AI apps and AI data products, how do you see that really evolving now that, because it, it seems like that you guys are always going to have to be adding more and more because people want to really make these things smarter. And you're really the glue to bring that stuff together and get the, the data pipeline to get them 
to make the AI smarter, be it RAG or be it anything else. What are you seeing? What are you being pushed on in that way? Well, from our perspective, these are all workloads that run on the data that we deliver. Uh, and so this evolution means more sources. It means new entities within existing sources. It maybe means uh, more adoption of data lakes as the compute engine people want to use to power some of these new workloads is maybe one that doesn't even exist yet. Uh, so those are the main, I think, evolutionary pressures that we are feeling from the data pipeline perspective. And, and last word, what are you seeing from, from your guys' vantage point, which is a little bit different? These technologies are so powerful. Uh, we are using AI agents in Claire now uh, to allow people to work with data management and uh, data as well. Being able to ask data quality questions, being able to ask a snowflake table about how many customers churned in quarter three of X year, right? What will change is that people have talked, thought about code as something that needs to be maintained, you know, pristine, and it has to be uh, taken in for a long time, and, and there was a whole ecosystem around it. But if you have Gen AI systems that can convert English into natural language statements, and then take decisions on what's the right formats, what are the right models to store that data in, I think that will be a very different world that we will live in. Yeah, I, I think that's a great place to land on because I know George and I could sit here and we have talked with both of you for way longer. So we'll have to have you both back and uh, really dig into this because I, I think, again, you guys bring such a great perspective across that data stack that really is key. So thank you for coming on board here today. Thank you. Nice to be with you. Okay. And thanks, George. Thanks for uh, thank bringing, you, the, bringing the knowledge and everything. So, And thank you, and stay tuned to SuperCloud 7 as we'll be right back. You won't want to miss this. We got a customer, end user coming up, talking about what they're up to. Stay tuned. <laughs>